Hey, it's Clay at ClayTurner.com. This is my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, December 11th. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are someone that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used as a tool to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. First off, a couple of clarifications. Number one, the candlestick that you see right there will still be moving around. That's because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And then second, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one, ticker symbol BITF. And wow, what a move this one had today. Now, to give a little bit more perspective, and I've been tracking this one pretty closely, the overall trend has already been very, very bullish. And you can see that the last time I did it, talked about that level right there, red line being an area of resistance. You can see broke above it back on Thursday. And then this morning, opening 30 minutes, huge move. And then it's been going very nicely ever since, including as I speak right now, you can see last 30 minutes is pushing to new highs. Uh, but overall updates need to be done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of these levels as they serve their purpose for now. And let's get a couple of newer updates into play here. But really from the overarching standpoint, if you're just asking, you know, Clay, what's, what's the simplest way to look at this? And no pun intended here, but just use a 50 period simple moving average. That's a level that's done a good job of just kind of showing the overall trend. In fact, right there, you can see the price bounced directly off of it. And I realize that the price is really far away from it, but that just really goes to show, you know, how much of a powerful move this is where the price has just separated that much, you know, above both these moving averages. So uh, the other moving average being down here, the pink line, but that's kind of completely irrelevant because that's not even close to the price. But nonetheless, in terms of kind of just general areas of support, I'd use that purple line right there. In terms of if you want a level that's a little bit closer for, for those of you that like to play pullbacks, then an interesting level right there at $2.35. In terms of areas of resistance, uh, a good problem to have right now because you're essentially in blue sky breakout territory. Uh, you're just looking back here and you can see there, there just aren't any highs. And as I speak right now, the price is going to new highs. So you kind of just got to use your gut instincts at this point or just wait for some sort of you know new high to develop or a pattern to develop. Uh, but again, like I said, literally going to new highs right now, which is a very good problem to have. When you look at a chart and say, wow, this thing is in blue sky breakout territory. And yeah, I really don't have any resistances right now to focus on. I mean, they will come, but that's always a good spot to be in, once again, assuming you're bullish. So overall, very, very nice day today. Very, very nice close last 30 minutes. So it'll be interesting if this can translate into Monday. Next one here, AMD, and the nice overall trend continues higher highs and higher lows. So on that note, I'm just gonna make one adjustment. And the key dynamic here is just, what direction is this adjustment being made? So now that we have more data, I'm gonna go ahead and move this area of resistance up to where the party stopped today, and that was at 131, and not to insult your intelligence, but you see I adjusted that uh, red line in the upwards direction. And assuming you're bullish, whenever levels of resistance need to be adjusted in the upwards direction, that's always a good sign. So if this thing does try to curl back up, now there does seem to be a little miniature area of resistance right there, but I'm not gonna, in my mind, not enough to really point, uh, you know, put a, a solid line in there. But if the price does curl back upwards and get to that area, uh, then that'll be the big battleground that you gotta think a lot of people are watching wondering, you know, can the price break up through that 131 mark? In terms of areas of support, nothing new here to report, assuming you watched the video previously. Uh, you still have that 125.75 mark as an initial area of support. And then from more of the overarching, uh, you know, angle, which I've talked about in the previous one, just use that purple line there, 50 period moving average. And as time goes by, that line will move itself higher and higher and get more and more relevant. So just keep your eye on those couple areas right there. But in terms of just the overall chart, very, very nice movement, especially when you consider that not that long ago, this thing was all the way down here. And now the price has worked its way all the way up there in just a couple of days. So definitely some very explosive movement. Next one here, BETS. And I just want to quickly touch on this one uh, because there's not a whole lot to say other than this thing was just a, a total pump and dump. And what gives me the right to say that? Well, let's think about where things started before the huge move. So things started there. And again, credit where credit's due. Massive move. And now you look where the price is at. Not only did it go back to where it started, again, it all started right there, but this thing just kept on going and now it's all the way down here. That is the, the epitome of a pump and dump. I mean, even worse than a pump and dump. A lot of pump and dumps start here, make a great move, and then they go right back to where they started. This one went even lower than where you know it started. So that's really all I have because I know it's a very popular stock and you know, you know, what are your thoughts on it? And that's really the, the quickest way to just summarize that is from an overarching standpoint, a, a total pump and dump. In terms of a trading standpoint, if you're looking to maybe try to take some kind of trade on it, uh, there is an interesting last 30 minutes here going on. You can see green candle. And with this green candle, there is a you know small break 
of the trend line right there. So is this some sort of leading indicator of a dead cat bounce to come? Possibly. Uh, so keep an eye on that if you like to play those sorts of situations. But again, as far as the overall story is concerned, an absolute pump and dump. Next one here, INTS, and this is a tricky chart to talk about because it's all about perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're a day trader, flipper, scalper, whatever you want to call yourself, and you bought right there and your plan was to buy and sell within 20 minutes, well, then yes, from that angle, the chart looks really, really bad because, yeah, you got to be fair. The price came up, and then the rest of the day, it did have this downwards channel about it. You can't refute that at all. Now, what about the bigger picture point of view? Well, from the bigger picture, you're going to care more about just this angle, you know, this part right here. You're going to take the angle of, okay, yeah, fair enough. It did form a downwards channel, but what was going on before all this? And you would say, well, the price was down here before it exploded all the way up here, which is now giving me the ability to draw a bull flag pattern. Again, I 100% realize that if you're some sort of day trader and you bought up around here, you don't care about this bull flag pattern. That's why I'm trying to distinguish between someone that cares about the bigger picture for some of that maybe had a, a day trader type strategy going into it. So if you're someone that likes stocks down below $10, you like bull flag patterns, keep an eye on it. Next one, AMC. And once again, so far so good. That level down here at 680, which I've talked about in past videos, has held strong. In fact, strong uh, this morning, price came down there. Beautiful. I mean, so if, if anybody watched the past videos and got some at 680 before that big bounce upwards, congratulations. Um, and, you know, you, you got a very nice bounce. So from the overarching standpoint, 680 is holding strong. Uh, you know, why is it at such an important level? Uh, because if the price drops below there, then all of a sudden you have the price essentially going right back to where it was, which as we, we've already established, not a good sign when the price movements great, make great moves and then go back to where they were. But like I said, credit where credit's due, 680 has been holding very, very strong. And then in terms of levels of resistance, we definitely have the level now that sticks out like a sore thumb, all about that pink line there. The 200 period moving average, you can see right there, check out the price came up there and just got rejected, rejected, rejected by it. So any sort of turnaround, all eyes gonna be on that pink line right there. Uh, but all things considered, 680 held once again, and that's a good sign. Real quick, wanna take a break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you wanna learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to build consistency and manage risk, then definitely get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box you can click on, or if you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage that you can click. So like I said, definitely get signed up for that free class if you've been enjoying and wanna learn more. Next one here, NKLA did this analysis yesterday, and that'll mean a little bit more to those that did watch that video. Uh, but as a quick recap, talked about that level right there being a level of support, potential double bottom there at 75 cents. Price did not hold above it, broke down, and then came all the way down here, but then had a very nice bounce. But this is where, uh, you know, just charts are powerful. I mean, you could throw this right into a textbook, but a rule in charting states that when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. Literally, bounce, 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 bounce. Look right where it decided to level off and now starts to pull back here a little bit, right there at 75 cents. So that's my long way of saying that moving forward, 75 cents is gonna be that key level of resistance, but it makes total sense when you consider that it was just formerly that area of support. In terms of levels of new support, Keep an eye on down there at the 68 cent mark. Nothing fancy or complicated behind that logic other than just asking the question, where did the bleeding finally stop? And the bleeding finally stopped at that level. So apparently there are some buyers down there at 68 cents. But all in all, nice bounce, sure. But the question mark remains, can the price break back above that 75 cent mark? We'll see what next week has to offer. Next one, PLTR. And overall, uh, nothing really new from the bigger picture, and I'll explain that. Uh, but from um, within the, well, let me just start there. From the bigger picture, I've been talking about this. We have this sideways channel. We have this area of resistance up there at 1795. We have this level down here at 1705. And it was just been a question of, okay, is the price going to consolidate here? Is it going to break in either direction? And it hasn't. In fact, this morning, you can see it didn't hit it exactly, but got very close to the bottom of the channel and then did a fantastic job of not only holding, well, assuming you're bullish, uh, you know, did a fantastic job of holding strong and then coming all the way up here, which again, didn't hit it exactly, but got very, very close to hitting the top of the channel before starting to pull back here a little bit. So that's what leads into the question is, okay, is this thing just going to be one of these channel plays where the price just now heads all the way back down to the channel there? Maybe not, to be fair. Maybe this thing is just taking a quick little break and this thing's about to turn back upwards and get a break to the upside. That's always possible too. But like I said, pretty eventful day today when you think about how the price not only te you know tested the bottom of the channel, but went up and all the way tested the top of it in a single day. Uh, but it also just shows that from a bigger picture, nothing really happened in the sense of the price is still trapped within the sideways channel. So overall, you know, PLTR, if you were to say summarize it, 
sideways channel pattern, top of the channel resistance, 1795, bottom of the channel support, 1705. Next one here, TSLA Tesla, and definitely getting into some interesting dynamics here as the price continues to just chop around, but the first part of the quote unquote chopping around that I wanna point out is check out how these lows just keep getting higher and higher and higher. So very crudely drawn, there is essentially a tread line here that's been formed, but at the same time, you have this very stubborn level up here that's been resistance up there at the 246.75 mark that hasn't allowed the price to get up above it. But in some ways you have kind of this big old wedge pattern here that has formed. And you know you gotta think that a lot of people are watching that dynamic. And when I say that, because when lots of people are watching the same dynamics and wondering the same thing, especially on the, when it's on a very popular stock such as Tesla, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want. It can produce some very dynamic movements and that's what we have here. Although what, I, what I'm curious about is, can we try to maybe forecast the break of that level of 246.75? And that's where, let me change it here to just make it stick out a little bit more. But let's see, in my mind, what I'm curious of is, if can the price come up here and if it gets a high volume break at that level, is that gonna be the leading indicator that not only does the price get to that level and break above it, of course, there's no guarantees, but in my mind, that becomes a very plausible thought process to have. So if you're trying to anticipate the break of that, how could you you know, potentially gauge whether or not it's you know, a leading indicator that it will be broken? I think that tread line right there could really help in that regard. In terms of the areas of support, watch that pink line down there, the 200 period moving average, but all things considered, definitely a very well-defined pattern here starting to uh, start and take shape. So it'll be interesting to see how the price plays within it next week. Next one here, M-A-R-A, -A, and the grind continues. Now I talked about this one a few days ago and I put this tread line in place. So let me actually extend this out because I'm curious. I don't think the price, whoops, ever hit it per se. Nope, it has not. But I'm gonna keep that there. And like I mentioned in the previous video, the interesting thing about these sorts of resistance tread lines is the price may never ever break above that resistance tread line. But that doesn't really matter because that does have an upwards angle to it. And as you're seeing here, the price put in a new high, it went up to right there, but it still is down below that level. So always, you know, these are the types of tread lines that are never really a bad thing because you don't have to worry about ever breaking it uh, because it is going up. But nonetheless, if there is any sort of surge upwards, I think that's a level that you could potentially use to monitor that as a resistance. And then just zooming in here, you can see that actually right now, the price as I speak, at least I think it is, is I think breaking a new highs through that, yeah. So basically sitting right there, you can see the previous highs right there of earlier on in the day, and the price is tapping right there at that level. So it's right on the verge of a potential breakout. And if the price does break out, then again, keep an eye on that level of resistance up there. In terms of areas of support, I'm just gonna simplify this here. Once again, no pun intended. And let's just use the 50 period simple moving average, which you can see did a good job of holding that support there and a temporary break right there before the price quickly recovered. So if you like pullbacks and that 50 period moving average certainly produces an interesting dynamic. Next one here, TQQQ, which is an ETF that measures the NASDAQ market. So if you believe the NASDAQ market is going to rise, this one will also rise. It just allows you access at a much lower price point, which makes it a very popular ETF. And very, very nice move today. Finally, after quite a while, the price has pushed up above that level that I've been talking about quite a bit at $44.50. So we're gonna get some updates here. First, I'm just gonna do a little house clean and get rid of these lines. Uh, they serve their purpose for now. But first update, when levels of resistance are broken and closed above, you wanna see them act as support. So in terms of what would make this chart look the strongest moving forward, that would be if the price can now stay above that area right there. Now, if it doesn't uh, hold above it, not the end of the world, because from an overarching standpoint, you have that purple line there, which again, moving average, which is gonna move itself higher and higher. So as long as the price remains above there, that's what's gonna make the chart overall look the healthiest. But in terms of just what make this look very, very powerful would be if the price no longer even drops down below that 4450 mark. What about areas of resistance? Well, the first key level to watch now in the very near term is basically right where it closed on the day at the 45 mark. And then after 45, essentially nothing until up here around these previous highs, which is around 45.75. So definitely some, some wiggle room right here to potentially get a, a deeper breakout. But all things considered, very nice day today, especially when you consider today started off as a gap down, but it recovered very nicely. So that wraps up the top 10 video here. So if you enjoyed what you saw, and like I said earlier, you wanna learn more about this tool, then definitely get signed up for that free live class next week. It'll be Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, please do a couple things for me. Hit the like button, leave a simple comment, say hi, give me your watches for tomorrow or for next week. Tell me what you traded today. But those things really help out the channel. They help out, help out with the algorithm and I really do appreciate it. So hit that like button, leave a comment down below. 
get signed up for that free class and let me know if you have any questions.